Just minutes ago, we got an update from the National Hurricane Center that Hurricane Milton has re-strengthened now with wind, winds at 155 miles per hour roaring toward the Florida coastline. I want to bring in the deputy director of the National Hurricane Center, Jamie Rome. Thanks so much for being with us, Jamie. What more can you tell us? What's the very latest? Yeah, the latest is uh, Milton has uh, reacquired some of its prior strength, and these fluctuations both up and down are to be expected with a storm this powerful. And I don't want pe people to get lost in that. I don't want, you, know, that you know, you can easily get lost in what it is now. I want people to focus on what it will be when it moves across the Florida Peninsula. And it will be a strong and powerful hurricane when it moves across the Florida Peninsula. It's going to cut a wide swath of huge impacts across a densely populated portion of the Florida Peninsula. This is our current hurricane warning that's in effect. So this is showing you where the hurricane force winds could be. So basically everyone in this red area needs to be prepared for potential long-term power outages. And then if we just talk about the storm surge for a second, so in this purple area, not everyone in this purple area, but somebody in this purple area is going to get 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. That would be roughly double what they experienced during Helene. Republican uh, Florida Senator Marco Rubio put out a tweet uh, saying several years ago he asked the National Hurricane Center to show him what the worst case storm to hit Florida would look like. And he says what he's seeing now looks almost identical. Is that where we are? Are we in potentially a nearly worst case scenario with this storm? It's a, it's a really concerning scenario because it's not just the power and magnitude of the, the hurricane that you're looking at. You're looking at how many people could be potentially impacted. So you're, in this case, with this 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, if that's realized, that's a very densely, densely populated area of the Tampa Bay, Sarasota area, and then extending down, it, you know, even all the way down the west coast of Florida, uh, less surge, but still very impactful. And then on the wind side, the wind side, this impactful wind. So this is, uh, again, hurricane force winds moving along the I-4 corridor. I mean, look at some of the towns you've got in here, cities, Tampa, Orlando, um, Daytona Beach. I mean, we're talking about a huge portion of the Florida Peninsula population feeling some type of impact from this system. Jamie Rome of the National Hurricane Center, thank you for bringing us the very latest. Appreciate it.